It's Geeks on Trial Time. This week, we're talking about the movies. Old movies coming back to theaters. That's exciting. We'll discuss. Then we get to our big case for the day. Superhero costumes. Do you gotta be shredded as heck to play one of those buff superheroes? Or is it okay to not be? Stay tuned for our verdicts. What you are listening to is real. The parties involved are not cool. They are actual geeks with a case pending in the court of public opinion. The party's case has been dismissed, and the dispute will be settled here on our podcast. There will be no lawyers. There will be no witness testimony. The judge's decisions are final. Hello, I'm Judge Ivan. I'm Judge Jonathan, and this is Geeks on Trial. Today's case, Six Pack Superhero. Welcome to Geeks on Trial. This is the podcast where we settle petty disputes between actual geeks over movies, video games, board games, and more. If you'd like to submit your own geeky case for a future episode, you can email us at geeksontrial at gmail.com. You can also support the show over at patreon.com slash geeksontrial for just five bucks a month, where you can gain early access to both our audio and video episodes, plus our bonus show, Geeks on Trial Sidebar. And you're going to want to see it this week because it's very special. It's a special sidebar. Yeah, we talked about it last week, but we uh, we got a whole 90-minute episode. Oh, boy. Only available. It's got audio and mm-hmm. video over on our Patreon page where we discuss our summer movie wagers, our predictions for what we think will be the top 10 grossing movies of this summer, uh, along with special guest Will Keeler from oh. Roll for Crit. And... Uh, you can go watch it right now. It's it's a, it's a really fun time. We'll also put a link in this episode, too. If you want to, without watching the episode, although you should, you can submit your own list and follow along with how we do throughout the summer at thesummermoviewager.com. Pretty cool stuff. And then at the end of the movie wager, we will talk about our uh, the outcomes right here on this very free show. So go ahead. We but, will. But, but, you know, you want to pay for it first. 90 minutes of content. 90 minutes of content. And it it felt like three hours. So, you know, you get. You get. You get. You get. So, speaking Speaking of movies. movies? Oh, hey. There you go. There you go. Hey, how's it going? Have you heard heard about movies? The old movies, they're coming back (laughs) to the theaters. And it's exciting. It's fun. And hopefully it'll get people out to see movies. Yeah, this is, uh, I thought, an interesting trend we could maybe throw back and forth for a minute, like a pigskin, before we get into the meat of today's show. Oh, I'm 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 vegetarian. Well, that's why you don't got to eat it. You just got to throw it. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a touchitarian. I don't like touching meats. It, yeah, if people haven't noticed that we've been seeing this trend lately of studios releasing mm-hmm. older movies in theaters in particular. Of course, this has happened in the past, but I've noticed it cropping up more. Uh, Sony is putting all eight of their Spider-Man movies back in theaters. I believe they're about halfway through that right now. Uh, but uh, starting with the Sam Raimi's and going up through the Tom Holland's. Uh, we also had... You've uh, gone up you through know, the Tom Holland's? It's a fun time. Well, if, it, if the Lincoln is clogged, sometimes I will take the Tom mm-hmm. Holland. Uh, we've, we've all, we've also got star Wars. The phantom menace is being re-released next month. The Lord of the Rings movies are all coming back to theaters in June. The extended editions, the 4k Mm. editions, actually, um, alien and the mummy were both, both just saw re-releases. I believe Shrek two is, uh, coming up on the docket pretty soon. So there's this big movement and some of these have done pretty well. I know in particular, uh, the Spider-Man movies, I think were originally just like one day and they extended them to three or four days in, in theaters, more more screenings, because they were doing pretty well. That's quite the extended cut. A three to four day movie? Yes. The, it's, That's too uh, much. You, you have no idea how much footage there. A lot. It's the raw, unedited. <laughs> it's just, here's my SD every card. Every take. <laughs> <laughs> not, in, not in order, not compiled in any nope. way. <laughs> it's just here. I would, I, I'm not going to lie to you. I would probably watch that. Just watching behind the scenes, like. Sure. But I'm I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a movie freak. I'm a weirdo. I'm have a, an have you as a movie freak and a movie weirdo? Uh, uh, does this excite you? Have you is have you gone out and watched you know any of these old uh, uh, re releases in theaters either either this year or in years past? I've I definitely like um, a big thing for me well, is we, I we don't, talked about mm-hmm. Titanic uh, once on the show. I should point mm-hmm. out, but yeah, sorry. Don't ahead. don't. I didn't ever, mean to interrupt you. Ever just, <laughs> interrupt me when I'm, I'm talking old movies. I'm sorry. This is my thing. This is not. I'm sorry. 
Fuck you. So, oh. so uh, yeah, we have like Titanic. We'll go through um, the uh, Fathom Events is is a, is a company that I think is still around. I know a lot of the theaters that I used to go see Fathom Events are gone because they used to do uh, smaller theaters or theaters that are not updated and stuff like that. But, mm-hmm. um, you know, we saw um, I forgot which Star Trek it was. I think it was Star Trek 2 we saw in theaters. Um yeah, but we will go out and see older movies, especially when it's like movies that I wasn't alive for when they were in theaters or didn't have the ability to go out and, and view this movie. Because it's definitely fun to see a movie on the screen where it was intended. Yeah, yeah. I I, I feel I feel similarly. I think it's really – I think the theater is often the best place to watch a movie. Right. I, I mean that's – it probably always is, right? <laughs> Pretty yeah. much. I will admit I'm – sometimes it's hard for me to – Especially if I own a movie, like mm. I have the Lord of the Rings right. movies on 4K Blu-ray, mm. and it's like, you know, I there is a war in my head of how great it would be to see them on a big screen versus, right. but I also paid for them already in my own house, right. and like, well, do I want to take the time to go out and, and see it? Which I know, I feel bad saying this because I don't, like, in my heart, I don't believe that argument, right. but... <laughs> Well, it's also to like, have you already seen a lot of these movies that are coming out in theaters? Because, because yes, they do seem like they're they're older movies, but they're not old movies. Like these came out during our lifetime, most of them. And it does seem like it's, it's big franchises that they've already gotten their money's worth out of. So I do see the side of it where it's like, oh, are they just milking this again to get a few more bucks out of this movie? But they should. They should milk because there's no downside for anyone. It's not like... Uh, it, it is. It, we. Sh- I wish we did have more opportunities to see these movies. My, my local theater, I really like because they actually do this pretty frequently. Mm-hmm. Uh, they just put them on themselves. Like for one night, they'll show a classic movie. Uh, usually, at least once or twice a month, they have some cool. kind of uh, promotion. Uh, re- uh, not that long ago, I went and saw a, a Charlie Chaplin movie that they. That oh, that's they awesome! Well, we do. Yeah. we've done that before. There's a. Um... We saw uh, the Buster Keaton movie. Yeah, what, what would you say that? It's not like a movie theater. It's just like a community, an arts center. There's like a community yeah, yeah, arts yeah. center where this is, we went and we saw a Buster Keaton movie. Uh, me and Danny went and saw Friday the 13th there. There was the original 35 millimeter print where it's like those movies when it's the original film, I'll want to go out and see it more because like there's like maybe a hundred of these left and it's like they, they don't travel as well. Or that theater, their gimmick is they have like the real organ in the theater and it's fun like that. But my issue with this is how much are they charging for a ticket to see Spider-Man? I think, if I'm not mistaken, I may, it may depend on where you go, but I think in a lot of places it's like only five bucks. See, I, that, it's not the price of a full ticket. Because that yeah. would draw me out. Because back in the day, a lot of theaters would have like, okay, there'd be the main AMC theater, but then there would be like the the the, the rerun house or the, the, the dollar theater, which used to be back in the day, mm-hmm. um, where you can go see movies that either came out last season or many years ago, but this is before VHSs were hitting the market rapidly. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah so it's funny from from what I shut up. From what I understand, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, like pre, especially pre, even during VHS, a lot of studios would just like this was just normal. Yeah, they they would a movie would play for longer in the theater, and it would like. Once a year, Gone with the Wind would just come out again, or well, Wizard of Oz, because there was no other way to watch it. Well, not only that, <laughs> so. but if you think about it, they spent all this money printing it to multiple thousands of VHS, uh, not VHS, uh, 35 millimeter prints. And it's like, we have these sitting in a warehouse somewhere, or, you know, I don't know how it worked. I don't know if they rented them or bought them, but like AMC, for example, or a big movie chain had these in a warehouse where they're like, well, they're sitting here taking up space. Why does my, we might as well make some kind of money on it. And it was really good for like, yeah, it technically probably took away some money from the the main theaters, but it was basically like, okay, we're going to go dump the kids off at the dollar theater, go see, you know, whatever kids movie that was came out two years ago that we couldn't see or that we missed because of limited screening. But I, I love when a theater, especially between uh, big movies, brings back older things, especially for cheaper. Because a lot of like yeah. our local Lowe's is a 10 theater building and sometimes they're just playing it for nobody. Like there's nothing playing. So you might as well throw in something uh, for backup. Yeah, it's a cool practice. And I think it is a fun way to get people 
to go to the theater because mm-hmm. so, sometimes people might be like, I don't know about this new movie, but if it's something they know that they love, exactly, or or maybe you're a parent and you have kids and you're like, you never got the chance to see Star Wars in the theater, right? But I want you to have that experience, and then you're like, oh, the movies are fun. What if we saw new ones too? Right, <laughs> that kind of thing. And it also brings helps. like you know, I, I'm not huge on you know how much money they're spending on popcorn and stuff, but it brings, you know, people in to buy the snacks and keep some theaters, hopefully smaller theaters alive to do this. Now, do you think this is, they've done this for years, but it seems like they're doing it a lot more. Do you think it's because we had writer strike and stuff like that, because there's not as many good movies coming out that they're kind of like pushing these movies? I wonder. Yeah, maybe. It could have something to do with it. I mean, having just gone over these summer movie slates right. for our lists, it does seem like, it doesn't seem like there's a lack of movies coming out. Right. But that could be the impetus behind it, or maybe they already, like, they planned and scheduled these because they weren't sure if they mm-hmm. were going to have movies or not to, to put out. It also just keeps things in the public mind like right. oh there's a new alien movie this summer right why not right. put out the original alien people can go see it or uh you know there's i mean there's not a new spider-man but uh, or because there's not a new spider-man like well we don't want people to forget about right. spider-man movies right. so let them go see that you know but i did notice around here even or even in just uh new jersey this happens a lot during the summers too because a lot of towns or beaches or whatever we'll do like a free movie night or whatever where it's like, Oh, you can go watch a movie outside or you can go see a movie at a thing. So like, I do think movies are bigger in the summer because parents are trying to find activities to do as a family or just get their kids out of the house and just to go do something because, you know, they're not in school. They're not at summer camp. You know, we need something to do as a family and this is a good thing to do. And movies for the most part are always an amazing uh, family activity. What's if you if there's one movie that you wish they would put back in theaters so you could go see it that because you never got the chance to? Oh, that's interesting. Uh, what well, what would it be? Because some of the big ones I feel like they they already have done for me. Right. Like I've seen Raiders on the big screen. I've seen Ghostbusters. You know, it would be a big um, one. And the the, the, the yeah. new movie's coming out shortly. And I just looked up because I'm looking at my my DVD collection is right above my head. The original Beetlejuice. I would love to see Beetlejuice in theaters and it would be a good idea well, because what well, that came out in like the eighties, late eighties, early nineties, whatever it would be, you know, the new movie is coming out. Might as well put it out in theaters for something that that would be a fun one. Um, any of the ghost, but the, the ghostbusters one or two would be fun. Yeah. Um, you, and, you mean afterlife and yep. frozen empire. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but for me, per- like I would go to, a, I would drive far to a theater for, to see any of the Hitchcock movies. Mm. on the big screen you i i did also yeah last year i or was it last year no maybe it was this year yeah, it was this march i went and saw darren aronofsky's pie for pie day got a re-release that's cool was it that might have been last year last year I, I, I feel like that's too long ago i think it must have been this year did you see it last year anyway. it, la- it was last month did you go last month yeah i know I don't know. I don't know. Oh boy, I you're can't losing. Remember. Oh no. <laughs> was it like but like a year ago feels too long. Anyway. You're gonna find but... out it was like ten years ago you saw it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh that was fun. I had never seen actually seen that before. Um so, I mean well, I just thought of I just thought of Magnolia because it's just my favorite movie. Right. And I would, I'd love to see that in a in a big in a big theater. But also an, another thing would be a lot of comedies, a lot of like mm-hmm. Even ones that I have seen, I'm thinking of like Anchorman. I'm thinking of Borat. Right. Movies that I remember seeing them in the theaters and hearing the whole audience laugh as yep. you watch it. Because that would be a Maybe good Dumb way. Dumb and Dumber. That would be a really good, be a good one. Because that would be a good way to bring comedies back into a theater and, and prove that, you know, comedies work on the big screen, guys. Like this, this is how this yeah. is supposed to be seen. Because you're right. Bringing like, or even like the 80s comedies or like Breakfast, like those kind of movies, bring them to the theaters because that would bring that crowd back. Actually, this would be a weird one that no one would go see. I just looked at it right now. Being John Malkovich, I would love to see in theaters. Yeah. I'd love to see more of those kind of, yeah. it feels like the ones they usually do this for are the blockbusters and the big action movies, which makes sense because they brought people it's... out the first time. So you might as well. Right. Yeah. Uh, but it, but I, you know, it, it would be cool. Like you said, yeah. Being John Malkovich or, or, or Magnolia, these are like more, you know, they're not necessarily, they're more like adult. They're probably right. they're not going to draw in all the kids. <laughs> but really, <laughs> like any of the Jim Carrey movies, <laughs> like stuff, like any like stupid comedies would be just fun. be great because like Airplane. That, that would bring people, right, Airplane, um, 
Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. You know, things like that. Sorry, I just watched that the other night, so I had to bring it up. So, yeah. So, yeah. Let us know in the comments below what movies would you want back in theaters, even if it's for, like, a one-night thing. But I, that is kind of a great – like, I hate when it's, like, one night only. We're seeing it at 6 p.m., and it's, like – yeah, we don't like we're still working at that. Like it, it, we can't go out on a Tuesday night to go see a movie, which I guess they do that for a reason to fill up those time slots. Because I, I, a lot of these movies, yeah. you will see them do it. Like rarely, it's on the weekends because like that's when the prime time hits. You, you want to do like right. you know, and you don't and you don't have enough screens, so you right. can't like yeah yeah. Uh, but it's neat. It's it seems like it's a. It's, I hope it is successful and that studios keep doing it because. I do think it's a fun thing to throw into the mix. And I would just love them to bring back, like, you know, just buy the the, the small the one screen theaters and do that kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. You know, what would be cool to see in theaters is maybe the original Superman. That'd be fun. Or maybe the original Wonder Woman. That'd be cool. <laughs> well, that sort of ties into today's case. Wasn't the original Wonder Woman from like the original <laughs> Wonder Woman movie like last year? Like, you know. Yeah, like five years ago. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah the original, the original, which is still wild to me that she wasn't in. A, anyway, well, anyway, it's time for today's case, which oh. comes to us from the internet. You can find a link in our episode description. Our defendant today is Margot. Okay, Margot and her boyfriend Chris are planning for a costume party with mm-hmm. some friends, and the friends suggest that the couple go as Superman and Wonder Woman, because Chris apparently resembles Clark Kent to a certain extent. Margot agrees with this, but she decides to make a little joke at his expense, noting that, quote, Steve would have to put in some serious work at the gym Who? if he wants to look like Superman. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I said the wrong name because they changed the name of the thing. <laughs> Cut this part out. Uh, <laughs> this won't be in the TikTok. <laughs> Chris, Chris would have to put in some serious work at the gym if he wants to look like Superman. Uh, You didn't hear anything. She thinks the joke is okay because Chris actually goes to the gym. He just isn't as, you know, fully buff and jacked as he used to be. However, nobody laughs at the joke. And while Chris says he's fine and not bothered by it later on, Margot's friends apparently took offense, and now they don't even want to hang out with her because they feel like she really crossed a line and was too rude to her boyfriend. As dual judges here on Geeks on Trial, it's now our job to determine whether Margot's joke was in the spirit of truth, justice, and the American way, or if her shady remark should get her sent to the Phantom Zone. What's a Phantom Zone? You see... That's from Superman. Mm. You know the square, and they get they go into the square and they float around. You ever see the original Superman movie? You never watched the? I might have. I just, it's, oh. All right. Yeah, there's a square. Okay. They get sent into it. <laughs> you see, on the on the on the Reddit, they uh-huh. used a different name, and I changed the name. No, they said I got but, it, but, but then... when I copied the name, I I didn't change it. I so forgot. So you didn't proofread your work. See, this <laughs> so is. I, I fucked up. <laughs> this is the first time you haven't been professional on this show. That's ever. the first time. The first, That's the first time, time ever. So in Rutter- any context. Mm. Oh, really? Huh. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. So so no. so 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 Steve. Where to begin? This is not our first costume case. We had one of these a while back that had to do with Star Wars costumes. And it was sort of a weird gatekeeping. Right. Uh, it was also a couple's costume issue, however. This might have been the same couple. We don't know. We don't keep track of these. <laughs> At the end of every case, we just take the physical file, which we print them out. We hand write yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. And we just They're burn them. They're mailed to us. We burn them. Oh, oh, you burn them? I burn them. Because I, I stamp them and I put them in your tray and I thought you sorted them somewhere. No, 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 no. <laughs> See, um, because we're not getting a lot of Patreon money, I have to heat the house somehow. And it's through the cases. That makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. And that, that's effective? Uh, no. No, I pass out often because you print them on plastic. It's very weird. So costume. Costume Costumes. culture. Superhero Are you? Costumes. No, we've, we've yeah. asked this before. We've talked yeah, about cosplay. Let's just do it again. We just, we do this. <laughs> Are you, <laughs> do you, do you costume? Is there anything that I've asked if you cosplays? I know damn well you don't cosplay. I, we've, we've dressed up as Halloween as certain things. Like you and I one year were the Skipper and Gilligan for for Halloween. That's what we That's did. That's true. And that let me true. tell you, the best thing about that was going door you have to door. a photo door. of that? Somewhere I do. I, I, it's not digital. Um, but going door to door and people being like, oh, you're a sailor and a cop? I'm like, you're 90. This is your show. 
We that was a damn good. That was uh, that was good. That was good. That was good. Probably never topped that one. Nope. Skipper and Gilligan was good. Better than because, Superman and Wonder Woman. Because it's an easy costume. Just two polo shirts, one blue, one red, and the hats. Now, here's the question, I suppose, that gets to the heart of this case, is how much do you have to, should you ideally resemble the costume that you choose? Because mm-hmm. I think part of the reason we, I mean, I don't know, neither of us really look like Skipper and, no. and the Gilligan. I was, I was, I had a belly, you were skinny. That was it. <laughs> right. But if you put us in the costumes, then you're you like, get... oh, yeah, I see. Right. I see, see. It's okay. So there's two different things to me. There is Halloween costume, which or costume party, and then there's cosplay. But sure, sure, sure. So to me, cosplaying, I do think at a certain point, cosplaying is the more professional end of just costuming. So I, you know, sure you can dress up as anything. There could be a fat Spider Man. There could be a skinny Spider Man. There could be a seventeen foot tall Spider Man. A short Spider Man. But if you're, if you're trying to be the Spider-Man from the comics and doing a full cosplay and potentially charging money for photos, appearances, etc., you should physically look like Spider-Man. And I'm not even just saying physique. I'm also saying, like, if you want to be a if you think you're a good Spider-Man and you're charging or going out. You should have like a, a facial. I mean, yes, Spider Man is a mask, but like <laughs> I was gonna say, <laughs> but like for other characters, for like a Superman, Batman, whatever. Even though they sometimes wear masks, your face should also kind of match too. Like if you're, if you are, if this is your passion, and you think you're a, even the people who do the things in like Times Square, you know, those kind of people, you should kind of look like Batman. Like you should have, like if you're the Dark Knight, you should have the the scruff. You should look like you know. To an extent, but if you're if you're charging, if you're doing that kind of stuff, you should look more like the the movie, TV show, comic book character that you're going after within reason, because you know there is like photoshopping and stuff. But I, I think you're right if you're like charging, like if you're, a, but I can't think of many situations where you're charging money for photos. Like cosplay is usually you're just hanging out. Right. At the con. Well, it also unless depends. you're like at a theme park. But like if you're something. at like a convention, like sometimes they do have like like photo areas and it's like come take photos with X, Y, and Z. Sure, you might not be charging. Or if you're in like the the cosplay contest or whatever. If mm. you if you're trying to if this is like what you're spending thousands upon thousands of dollars on, you should kind of <laughs> I think, kind of look like it. I think it depends I mean, kind of is yeah, is relative. Like I think if you like you should put if if a certain amount of effort is put into the costume itself mm-hmm. and it looks really good uh, like and if you the problem is there's so it's like too broad a discussion i feel like you need specific examples but like uh you know if you're doing a, a wonder woman costume for instance oh you got, oh, I got some indigestion oof. wonder woman gives me indigestion <laughs> With some pepto? Uh, like, you should... I think, as far as I'm concerned, the most important elements are, like, the costume, hair, and makeup, right. and props. I don't I don't put as much stock in, necessarily, like, literally your physical appearance. Also, well, also because if we're talking about a comic book character, mm-hmm. there's... Artists have drawn them differently a right. hundred different times over the years, so it's like, unless you're going for a specific, like, oh, I'm the... You know, I'm specifically the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man or or something. And that's where I think, like, I'm, like, thinking of. It's like, okay, I'm playing Spider-Man from this movie. Or I'm playing, you know, Superman from Batman v Superman. Like, you're playing it from a specific movie. You should have But you're right. You could be like, oh, I'm, I'm Spider-Man from issue whatever. This is how they drew it. So this is how I'm doing it. You know, like... Cause also, I mean, a lot of these characters are like if you if you said describe Peter Parker, mm-hmm. it's like, well, I guess he's a brunette and he's right. kind of uh, that like he has a face like a normal looking guy, right? <laughs> like, cause that's uh, maybe that's a specific example, but I feel like even Clark Kent is a little bit like eh, they're kind of like chiseled jaw, right? Uh, face. That's about- but, handsome. <laughs> but you also look at, so let's go into the costume aspect of this, where a Halloween costume, I feel like, could be, it's a costume. You, you're putting on a disguise. You're not yeah, trying yeah, to yeah. trick anybody. It's literally like, I'm just dressing up as Superman. Anybody could do that. You know, you and I could both have Superman outfits on, and 
you guess what? Somebody look at you and go, you're Superman. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> they're not going to be like, well, you aren't Superman from issue number 25 of this. Co-. You know, they're not going to give you slack. Um, well, uh, that's why we don't invite you to parties anymore. That's why? That's why. Well, that's number 13. I, I thought it was the incident. Well, it's also the odor. I have I have personally kind of gone uh, different ways with this. In high school, one time uh, I was a Ghostbuster. Right, yep. Bring it back to Ghostbusters, mm-hmm. and I certainly did not. I was not going as a specific Ghostbuster. No, and like, actually, I don't. I don't look like Bill Murray or Harold Ramis or Dan Aykroyd. Well, I kind of look like um, Ernie Hudson. <laughs> you, so, uh, Slimer. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yes, but I wasn't Slimer. But um, I was a Ghostbuster. Fun thing, I sold you that costume because <laughs> you came to the party city that I used to work at. Classic. What a good times. Uh, but then. The, well, here's the thing for me also. At a certain point, I shaved my head. You and shaved? once the hair, yeah, once the hair is gone, it didn't just it didn't just fall out. Oh. All of it at once. <laughs> I helped. <laughs> huh. And that does that's the specific thing that right. does limit your that's like one of the few things where I feel like I if I dressed up as I mean, I could dress as Superman, but it's weird if you're a bald Superman. Well, like, no, no. Only, it limits you, but it makes you have more options because as a bald person, you don't have to put on a bald cap to go get a wig. You can, <laughs> no, no, but tr- truthfully, oh, like, you can go out and get any wig that you want and be any character. You can even go and get like a Rick and Morty, like a Rick wig that's just all weird and stuff. And it works because mm. you don't need to hide uh, a head full of beautiful red hair. True. Then I got to wear an itchy wig for a night. <laughs> That's no fun either. Uh, like one time, so I, I did use my baldness for, to my advantage for a couple of years. I was Charlie Brown. That was a very low yep. rent costume. Yes. It was literally a shirt and a squiggly yep. line. <laughs> uh, one year I was the Dean from Community. Yep. Um, I think those are the only two I ever really did like that. Like, there's a lot of bald characters. You could be Homer Simpson. <laughs> what, I'm going to paint myself yellow? <laughs> or just get really drunk and get jaundice. <laughs> Uh, now, like I don't know if, if you have ever. I don't no. feel like you've done it. You've never well, done like oh, a, a redheaded character or a. <laughs> I mean, like I said, we did. Um, oh, one year you and I were uh, uh, Mario and Luigi. We did Mario and Luigi. We did, um, like I said, uh, Gilligan and the Skipper. But like that doesn't really do anything for like my appearance generally like yeah he was a bigger guy and mario's a bigger, bigger like, guy smaller guy <laughs> right that was basically the extent of it like i did a lot of like because like i said i i did a lot of i worked in a lot of halloween companies did a lot of like makeup stuff while i was going through film school and stuff so it's basically like all my costumes are always like you're a zombie you're this character you're like something where you just apply makeup and it's like you blend in but it's like I, but i would also i would choose that for my character like i would like one of the big costumes uh, during the, the 90s and 2000s was the ghost face killer from the Scream movies. Not from uh, Wu-Tang Clan? <laughs> <laughs> but I would never, like, because it's like, oh, it was always a skinny guy. Like, I would never try to, like, pull off being the ghost face killer because, like, oh, you're, you're a fat ghost face. Like, we can catch you. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a, that's a good one. Um, yeah, anything where you just cover your full face. Right pretty much works well now what yeah so what about in this case we're talking about we're going down to the minutia of the musculature right and uh margo is telling chris that's his name Mm -hmm. that i've written down not enough spend some more time at the gym now she's joking but but is that uh you know would you go so far as to be like you got to be if you're going to play a buff character you should be like buff does that is that fall under your umbrella of looking like them oh let me just break this down into to relationship things like if i were to ever say that to like or if i if i were to ever say that to a person that i'm in a relationship with or they were to say that to me i'd be like that's that's fucked up like that's <laughs> because yes she might have been joking but margo like they mentioned in the case that like chris was more buff at one point Chris used to go to the gym. Chris might have looked more like Superman in his past. And, you know, things caught up to him, age, having, you know, actual hobbies and stuff besides going to the gym. So I feel like there might have been a little bit of a, um, like, a you know, I kind of miss what you used to look like. I kind of like, you know, with every joke, there's a grain of truth to an extent. And I kind of feel like with this situation, 
just, just you know, it, it, there could have been a little bit better of a way to say it. I don't agree with people being like, oh, we're not talking to her. That's, you know, that's whatever. But, like, there is a better way to do it. Because if you look at the Christopher Reeves, or even, like, if you go back even further to the original television Superman, he wasn't, like, modern-day Superman that we we have on screen Who's, today. Which was the original television Superman? I don't remember a... his name. But it was, like, a, it was a black and white <laughs> 50s. Oh. He, he was on Isle of Lucy, oh. he, if you remember that. Like George? Is it, is, it, is it another Reeves? Was it was it Christopher it Reeves' be. dad? Let me just talk for a few minutes. <laughs> All right. Uh, he's looking that up. Because I never watched that. I, I'm thinking of uh, Dean Cain, Lois, and Clark. <laughs> but do you remember, like, uh, I, I don't know if you were an I Love Lucy watcher, but they had the episode of I Love Lucy Big where Lucy Superman head. came to visit little Ricky. And and they do the routine in the mirror where he honks his horn and she that, thinks that it's No, that it's was, her. That, was, that was little Ricky. Oh, that was little Ricky. Uh, Yeah, no, I mean, I remember the old Superman cartoon, but I never, I never watched the, I mean, I mean old, like there's a 90s one, but then there's like the old, like 50s. So it was called The Adventures of Superman, and it was a, can't get an exact date on, 50, 53 through 51 era of Superman. It went backwards? Well, no, just the way the dates were. Well, who played him? What was the actor? I am looking for that right now. <laughs> that should be. That's not the first thing that came up. This show sucks. <laughs> yeah, you're right. George Reeves. Okay. I thought that that might have been it. So, George like, Reeves. George Reeves just looked like your your typical 1950s, like, dad. Like, he wasn't like a. <laughs> well, like, that's the same, same exact thing with Adam West, right? Right. Yeah. You look at. Yeah. Like, um, you know, the original Batman, he was not. He was not. No. R- ripped. No. <laughs> he was but just a guy. If you think about it, that makes like it was probably healthier back then than it is now because like people little kids were like, Oh yeah, my dad looks like Superman. My dad looks like like it made it was like a a, a, a mm. normal person in a costume saving the world where now it's like, okay, you need to have a six pack, you need to be, you know, camera ready. But so like in my brain, I don't ever think of Superman as like a chiseled six pack kind of guy because my Superman is George and Christopher Reeves, which I don't know if they're related at all. Didn't do any more research on that. I'm pretty sure that's his son. Uh, yeah. Which that's awesome. That's, that's yeah. really cool. That's a thing, but you know what I mean? Like Christopher Reeves, you know, was he wasn't sloppy. He wasn't fat, but he wasn't like, he wasn't buff. He wasn't what we uh, yeah. call buff today. Um, so it's like, you know, yeah, I guess the quote unquote superhero who's cosplaying and stuff, it's usually the 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 buff guy taking after Superman because he is a Superman, you know, like. But those original things, Superman wasn't a big, burly like he was like a, a strong man, but not visibly strong, if that makes sense. Like he didn't have he didn't have show muscles. He had actual muscles. I think that's very much a thing in general in uh pop culture across all like movies right because where there is so much more of an emphasis now on if if you if you look at like other than like Schwarzenegger mm-hmm. you look at like action movies from the 80s and even into the 90s right and people weren't like they were in shape but like they took their shirt off and they still kind of looked like a normal person right they were more relatable and- <laughs> And then, and now you look at every Marvel movie and DC movie and they're like, in, they make that part of the deal is you must, we are going to pay for a trainer and you're going to work out 12 hours a day for the next six months. Right. You must look like a God and Adonis to do well, this, which sometimes makes sense. Like Thor should look like that probably. <laughs> but look at it this way. Look at like Chris Pratt. Chris Pratt used to look like more of oh, like 80s actors when he was on parks and rec and stuff to when he got on to be um in in guardians he ended up having yeah. to lose a shit ton of weight get chiseled where same acting same abilities between one movie and the other and it's like in guardians of the galaxy he didn't need to be a chiseled person he he sat in a chair and flew a ship like yeah um Christopher Reeve is not at all related to uh, oh, George Reeves. That's ironic. Their, their last names are, in fact, different. <laughs> huh. It's Reeve and Reeve without an S. Oh, uh, okay. But still. <laughs> so I'm just a moron who just assumed they were. That's weird. It's weird. It's right. a weird coincidence. Right. 
but uh, I'll just set the record straight there for you. Right. Um, but yes, uh, yeah, the muscles are, it, it would be nice if, if we could just let people, just, I mean, obviously this goes for women too, in a completely right. different uh, direction. The, the Hollywood body, body, demands are have very been yeah been taxing unrealistic. taxing on women from you know speaking of Isle of Lucy we were wa- we've been watching Isle of Lucy on Pluto Lucy to sleep. today would be hot <laughs> oh but like look at like uh, there's one scene where it's like early on they showed her waist and it was like the Woo! size this like it was like a size zero I'm like that's not healthy you Ow! can't yeah, there you go you like I'm, Awooga! <laughs> you like I'm anorexic oh 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 Lucy! Ho, 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 ho. Anyway. <laughs> I think it's really the smoking in every scene that did it for me for Lucy. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. So we agree unrealistic body standards across Hollywood. Right. Uh, we also agree that uh, you shouldn't necessarily need to be in amazing shape to, to portray a superhero, even if you should look like them, especially if it's not uh, standard costume and even if it's like, okay, so bring Cos- it, professional costumes, bring it into the relationship aspect. The, I'm yes. assuming. Let's so this group down. of people were in, they were, they were together. They're sitting at a dinner table. They were sitting in a room together. They're all, and it kind of feels like, you know, Margot's comment. Sure. Margot might've said, Oh, it's a joke. But like to say it, to point out that like, maybe Chris maybe let himself go in her eyes, even though he might've, may not have, Maybe you don't bring that up. And like, if if Chris were to say the same thing about Margot, there would have been mm. hell to pay once he got home. <laughs> well, maybe. I mean, you're making an assumption. You, you are. Know. I'm just going by what, you know, entertainment standards are kind of thing of like, you know, men can get away with men. Men can men take more of the blame sometimes in this thing and are expected to be like, yeah, OK. Where well, like, I think. There's less, generally speaking, there's not as much of a stigma against body shaming when it comes to men. Right. I mean, look, every, it's it's a it's a hard subject to get into because right. every person is fucked up by our, our society and right. our pop culture. But generally speaking, it's more accept. And don't take read this as me saying like, oh, men One are more oppressed other, or right. anything like that. But in this specific instance. I feel like it is generally more acceptable to like make fun of a guy's body than a woman's body. 100%. But it also depends on the context. I don't know. Even saying that I'm like, but like we can, we can both agree on that. Like (laughs) this comment be male, female, other gender didn't need to be mentioned and, and, and really shouldn't be mentioned because it's like, Hey, you don't know what he was planning on doing. He could have made an amazing Superman without going to the gym or you don't know what's going on in somebody's head. Like maybe just don't be like poke fun at people's body images because you don't know what's going on with them. Like, you know, it just seems like there was more going on besides like, well, what is let, let's, let's, let's step okay. back from the body specificity. Mm-hmm. Cause is isn't there room in a couple though for you to kind of make fun of each other a little bit to what's ex- the where do you draw the is the line because of the body is it because of it's in front of their friends where does what's the cutoff point that makes it not I okay? would say in public it's not okay like this is like a like a in bedroom, like not in bedroom, but like in the privacy of your own <laughs> thing. <laughs> oh, you're looking a little Lucy. chubby over there. How you oh, doing? God. Eyes pop out like the, the wolf from uh, Looney Tunes back in the day. Daffy, yeah. Daffy the wolf. That's what yeah, it is, he's that right? funny Daffy's wolf that's always wolf. fighting with Bugs Bunny. Talks with a lift. <laughs> so, yeah, so like I would say like in front of like your friends or like when you're trying to like, like what. To an extent, I would say no. Like maybe not making fun of people in front of other people in a relationship. Eh, it's probably not the best thing because you don't know how other people are going to take it. You know, like are you in a group of with his friends or her friends or is it a suggest? You know, I would say maybe not so much. Mm-hmm. It because definitely depends on who the friends are and how well you know them. Because I'll catch myself saying that and be like, oh, shit, was that mean? Is that something I would say? 
in front of Never people. Never had that thought. <laughs> what? Is something mean? No, you haven't. No, because, no. uh, yeah, I just don't know. I don't know. Hmm. You piece of shit. You bald motherfucker. <laughs> hey, come on. What? I do not fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Mothers. Huh? Oh, sure. Well, well, all right. But, y- yeah, so, like, what do you think about that? Do you think, like, there is a place for that in front of super, super I certain think friends? It, I think it completely depends on the couple. I think right. it depends on the relationship, and I think it depends on the subject matter. Because mm-hmm. there's certain things that you should know whether or not they're off limits right. uh, at any given time. Because there are certain things people are sensitive about. Right. And certain things that you know are okay to joke about at certain times. And it seems like between the two, like, he at one point was going to the gym. So he is somebody who is... He still is, apparently. Just not as much, I guess. But he's, like, somebody who, like, he was fit-focused. Like, that was his lifestyle kind of thing. That's, like, you know, for anybody like that to have, like, a six-pack and chiseled abs, and like, you have to try. (coughs) Excuse me. Oh, come on. Wonder Woman giving you indigestion? Yeah. But... Oh yeah, we got. I do think it's important to note that uh, what's his name, Chris says, <laughs> Chris is not the one who's bothered by it, right. unless you unless we think that he's just hiding his sadness deep inside. <laughs> well, it, he might be, but but I it's do think it's, it is it is weird that like you know maybe there's you know if we're at a friend group, if we're at a, a game night or whatever, and I say something, and somebody's like, ah, Ivan, that's a little much. Be like, okay, fine, whatever, but. Mm. In, but that's fine to an extent, or like, ooh, that's a little harsh. Like, is everything okay with you two? Like, that, privately, but maybe not in the open to, like, poke I'm the bear? I'm trying to think what would cross the line. Like, I, I'm imagining this scenario. If we were at a game night and, mm-hmm. and, and someone was like, you guys should go as Superman and Wonder Woman. I don't know, whoever, <laughs> whoever the fuck. Mm-hmm. And Danny was like, oh, I would have to go to the gym for that. I think I would just be like, heh <laughs> I don't think I would find it that offensive. Would or you? you would be like, no, nah, not really. It depends on like how I was feeling that day or like, but, but it's also our, our group and of I friends. I know you guys. Yeah. Right. right. We're, we're, you know, we're, we, we, you know, you're busting each other's balls over here. Like we've known each other, our collective friend group for long enough to where it'd be like, if we were upset about it, be like, okay, we would start clapping back at you. Be like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Ugly. Free. You but know, like it feels pretty. I don't know. When I think about it, in a, in, at least in our context, it right. feels it doesn't seem so offensive. But also, like me. it's rare that like we would do anything like that. Like our group isn't yeah. like like we'll, we'll make really. jokes. We're 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 assholes. Don't don't get us wrong. <laughs> but we won't like attack somebody personally. They'll be about like your personality traits, not your physical appearance. Right. Or if it is something <laughs> about physical appearance, it'd be like you know something that you can't. You know, do, like, I'm like, sure I've, I mean, baldness is on the menu for sure. Right. There's no qualms. No one feels bad about making fun of me for not having hair. But like we wouldn't, like it's, it doesn't happen like every time we see, it's just like, oh. No, no, no. There's, yeah. It's, it's, or like I know, said, it's depends. usually a clap back. Like if you say something, you'll be like, oh, okay, uh, visible, you're bald. We'll just say, you know, like. <laughs> or it's just like a such a, yeah, it wouldn't be done in a malicious way. Right. But we also, like I said. We wouldn't bring up, like, if, if if you were being Superman and somebody would be like, I don't know, you don't have the Superman, but I don't think that would ever come up as a natural conversation. It may, I mean, maybe not. Yeah, I don't know. I don't like, know. I just feel like we, we aren't that kind of, like, we wouldn't do that. I think there's maybe equivalent stuff that we yeah. might say, but it's just not uh, quite coming to mind. But it's right rare now. that, like, we don't attack body stuff. You know, like because yeah, it, we're all weird looking freaks, right? <laughs> He's we can't throw stones in our glass right. houses over here. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, we're we're more enlightened than that. Like I think the I, biggest I, thing that we do is like when we go to conventions, it's like, oh, I just thought I saw Jonathan walking over there because it was a, a forty five different bald guys. Oh, I thought I saw Ivan because it was a uh, overweight ginger. Like you know, like come on, see that crosses a line. <laughs> I'm sorry, overweight. Apologize to yourself, red haired person. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, don't say you can't say the G word with a hard right. R like that. <laughs> That's that is rough. Uh, uh, yeah. So yeah, there's the, a lot of these things are very. It's so dependent on the little minutia, the subtleties of the relationship. Well, Everyone has their different lines. That's the other thing too. It's like 
you know, maybe this is something that Chris and Margot, like maybe their friend group has been seeing this often. Mm. Like, mm. let me ask you this, you know, if it comes up once, it's kind of like, a, oh, okay. But like, if you see Margot often mocking Chris's body, then at like, some <laughs> right. point, do you like go, maybe, maybe chill out. Maybe. <laughs> it dep- well, this also depends on who, am I Margot's friend or Chris's friend? Who You're, am I? <laughs> well, it's a group friend. So I know them both. We all you met in college. Both. <laughs> We're all like, you know, it's like me bringing Danny to game night. Like, yeah, Danny is the newer I person. Honestly, but, like, if you're really asking me when I say something, I no, I never would. <laughs> okay. I'm just not, I'd be like, that's none of my business. That's, okay. They've worked that out. I mean, unless they were really like, or unless they said see, something horrible. I might see we've been, so me and Danny have been together for 11 years at this point. And at this point, you guys kind of like figure out like, oh, it's been. It's, you know, they, they know each other, they're back and forth, whatever. If it was somebody new, like, let's say you brought in a new partner into a game night and she was like, I don't know, you might be a little too fat to be Superman. At that point, I'd be like, maybe find somebody else. She's like, hey, what do you think about this bald piece of shit that I'm dating? Right. Like, maybe at that point, I'd be like, maybe rethink who you are. <laughs> I'd be uh, like, that's what I like. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be like, let's go to the, the bathroom. I get off on the humiliation. And by the way, we're sitting at a Taco Bell, too. This is happening... At a public restaurant. Yeah, no, I wouldn't say anything. I'd be like, yeah, let them have their fun. You take, um, her, you take her to the sauce bar. I don't know. I feel like, I don't know. I think we can get into verdicts. Okay. Uh, I'm going to let you go first. You're going to let me go first? I'm going to let you go first. That's the bald freak. I kind of want you to go first, but maybe I don't. Okay. Let me get my gavel out. So, oh, okay. <laughs> we're th- I'll go first. So, we're thinking, is, is Margot guilty for making fun of Chris? I suppose that's, yes, I suppose that did she cross a line with this remark? I would have to say in the selective friend group, in a relationship, in this thing, and we don't know how they are back and forth. We don't know what they are like in this friend group. Is this the kind of friend group where they bust balls, where they do this kind of stuff all the time? I'm assuming it's not. If somebody or multiple somebody's approached or mentioned this, um, and I'm talking with my gavel a lot here. If you're watching the video thing, it's kind of interesting. I it's would fun, say yeah. Margo is guilty. Margo is guilty of, you know, maybe manslaughter manslaughter, uh, because, well, we don't know what happened afterwards. She did go home and slaughter at least one man, but All I right, would I mis- say I, I misspoke. She's guilty of man's laughter. Oh, man's Keep water. She lauded a man. So I would say, yes, Margo is guilty of maybe, it's a borderline of potential body shaming, but it's not. But I would say maybe, maybe this isn't a joke that you would bring out in public in this friend group because Chris is a gym goer. He is somebody who cares about his body. What we were talking about before, like, yeah, sure, we all have, we all care about our bodies, but not like, like we're not people who go to the gym and work out and are trying to look like whatever. So it's like we can make fun of each other for that because we're not that kind of thing. It sounds like he at one point enjoyed his body Maybe when they first started dating, he was more chiseled than he is now. So I feel like let let Chris have his fun, dress up who he wants to let let him, you know, don't don't make him sound like he's falling apart as it is in his old age. Keep it to yourself. Mention it at home. Maybe be like, you know, maybe go for the the Christopher Reeves and not the new Batman or Superman. <laughs> you know, maybe different. But I would say Margot is guilty of just being a little bit a little mean, a little mean. In, in, in public. So guilty. Well spoken. It's your, it's your turn. Oh, it's my turn. It's your turn. I'm going to have a beverage while you talk. So I do think that this, this remark was maybe a little out of line. How's that beverage? Is good. It's all right. <laughs> okay. Uh, maybe a little bit out of line, not necessarily necessary. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, I do think You know, she's not, it's not as if she's saying, at least I don't read it this way. I don't think she's putting her foot down and saying, no, 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 you absolutely cannot play Superman. It would be ridiculous. It's unrealistic. No one will believe it. Don't do it. We're not doing it. (laughs) I don't think she's saying, don't do it. You can't do it. Don't do it. All right. Don't. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Kala, she's, uh, you know, so, because that would certainly be crossing a line. Right. I think I'm going to have to take the other tack here. 
because I do the and the the thing for me that really makes the difference is that I'm gonna believe Chris when he says that this joke doesn't bother him. Okay. If this if if Chris were openly offended by it, and of course we don't have his take, and who knows what he's feeling on the inside, but from the sounds of it, I'm gonna take it at face value that he this is not something that offends him too much. No. She said that he's comfortable with his body and likes the way he looks. Before you smack that gavel. Yeah, I'm if, not smacking it yet. If the roles were changed, and if this was genders reversed, would you have the same thought process? If Chris if she's, said if the she's same not offended thing by it. About Margot. Okay. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah, uh, 100%. I, I think it's uh, I, I think it's weird on the part of the friend group to be to take it this seriously mm. whether or not even well, if I do you agree, agree with that yeah yeah even, yeah even if you think the comment was too far i find it very weird that they were like this <laughs> they shunned her yeah like that is a bit weird <laughs> well that's why like again not to interrupt you but like if i knew like how long they were together and like if this was yeah, a yeah. brand new like even like a year-long relationship maybe that kind of a thing or it's like you know it's his friends that he brought her into I could see that, but go ahead. And that, and that's kind of why I'm okay with this being, if if it goes the way I'm implying it will go, a mistrial. Hmm. Because I I do think it's kind of somewhere in the middle. I really don't like. Maybe the remark was a little shitty, but it sounds like he's in a healthy enough place, and that the in my mind the joke is not so over the line. That it's just a thing that if it weren't for this friend group, I think they would have just laughed it off and never would have come up again. It doesn't sound like it's a repeat offense. It doesn't sound like there's some insecurity on Chris's part about his body necessarily, that this is like a dig that goes too far. So, like, I get it, but personally, I don't feel strongly enough about it that I that I think she's guilty. So, for, for, for me, I call her not guilty. Well, because he's okay, he, you know, he's fine that he's getting a little chubby. He because he says he has a it's huge okay. hog. He has a he's got that Superman hog. <laughs> he's so he's hung like a horse. And and it would I, yeah, I do think it would be different if he if he was offended by it. And, right. But it sounds like they have a rapport, and I think it's okay to rib your your loved ones a little bit. I don't think this is crossing the line. But again, a lot of this is is also so without really knowing right. the couple. I have to, I'm giving the benefit of the doubt that it's because you also have to be like, is it okay? So if once again, in the relationship, if they were to to, to flip the table, if Chris were to say the same thing to Margo, would Margo freak out? Because I feel like if you're able to back and forth, like if you're able, if the wife is able to say something to the husband, boyfriend, whatever, then you should be able to say the same thing to her. Like, that's where I say that's where it is healthy. In that yeah. relationship, healthy to an extent, you know, you should. If you can't dish it out, that. then don't take it. Right, and if it's a whole, you know, man versus woman thing, I don't know what you're talking about, but yeah. So I, I agree. So it is a mistrial. That means in this case, both parties are punished. Mm-hmm. Now I think the other party in this case is not Chris. It's it's the friend group. Right. You know, let's let's not let's not make blame on Chris or Margot and give them a punishment. Let's punish the friend group. But we, you you have to punish Margot. You declared her guilty. That's your job. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Because I, I also don't like the friend group. <laughs> yeah, well, don't worry. I'll give them some shit. Okay. Uh, what's what's Margot's punishment? Ooh, what is Margot's punishment? Chris, okay, so Chris would have to pick the outfit out for Margot that he thinks she would look good in, even if she doesn't look good in said outfit. <laughs> so does he, does he intentionally pick something to make her look stupid? <laughs> sure. No. Or like what he thinks she looks good in. Huh. I don't know. It's starting to feel like a that weird fetish territory. If you, <laughs> the friend group, I think has to, um, hmm. they have to do stand up, open mic stand up mm-hmm. for a week at a at like a New York comedy club at a real real heckler place. Yeah, and see and see what it feels like to to try to tell jokes and have nobody laugh at them. <laughs> There you go. Uh, Margo every, has to dress up yeah, as every Superman. night for a week. There you go. Margo has to dress up like Superman. Yeah. And you know what? Firing squad, death. Oh, for everyone? Mm, just Chris. Just, oh, because he got, because he's too fat. Yeah. It's frankly disgusting. <laughs> he should be ashamed of himself. Sure. 
Uh, if you have a, a disagreement or an agreement with our verdicts today, who do you side with? I just you told you. Margo's guilty or not guilty? I'm talking to the listeners and viewers right now. Oh. Sorry if that wasn't clear. Sorry. You out there in, in your car, in your, in your pod, let us know what you think. You can leave a comment on YouTube or you can email us, geeksontrial at gmail.com. Same place you can go. Let us know what your dis- oops, oh my gavel. Jesus Christ! <laughs> I got excited. I threw it. Let us know what your geeky disputes are. We'll settle them here if they have to do with cosplay, comic books, video games, movies, any kind of geeky subculture. Let us know what the deal is. Give us your case. We will change the names to protect the innocent. We'll try to get them correct. I hit myself in the head with the gavel, <laughs> and we'll settle them for you on the show. We'll even listen to hear about your weird, uh, your fetishes, your we'll weird sex fetish. shit. Humiliation, yeah. mm-hmm. costumes, all that jazz. And if you want to support us, you can support us over on patreon.com slash geeks on trial. That's where you get some fun stuff, some extra shows and these shows earlier. If you pay us that money. Hey, Jonathan, where can people find you out there on the Internet or in the real world? Let us know. Well, the real world, that's a, you know, story for another day. I'd love it if you went out and followed me on Blue Sky, the new social media platform that's sweeping the nation. I'm at Jonathan Estes over there. Uh, and you can find all the other stuff I do at JonathanEstes.com. How about you? You can follow me also on Blue Sky. Link is on the screen right now. And you can head over to Ivanhan.com. What if you're listening on audio? Uh, they're fucked. You don't remember the, your name. <laughs> I know. I think it, it might you be Ivanhan. I don't remember. <laughs> okay. Um, but you can follow me over there. But how often are you posting on Blue Sky? Because I... Uh, I'll see the the link on my phone and be like, oh, I should post something and then forget. Uh, Not that often, but I did post a couple things in the past week or so. So I'm, you know, I'm trying to I'm I'm trying to step it up when I remember. I'm not always good about it. Me as well, because I still have X on my phone and I I, I, get with X. Well, I use that for news. I use that for news. Yeah. Blue Sky is coming up that you they just added GIF support. You can now post GIFs on Blue Sky. Do they have hashtags? Are they the hashtag one? They They got hashtags now. Because Threads, remember Threads? Threads, I don't think, does hashtags, even though Instagram I thought, does. No, I think they do. I think do they, they do hashtags. Yeah, I, I thought think one so. did and one didn't. Blue Sky just added them in the last month or so, so that might be why. Well, that's, you know, that's fun. I don't know. Let so, us know what you use. <laughs> so until next time, I'm Ivan Han. Oh, I'm Jonathan Estes, and boy, is this case ever closed. <laughs>